After all this isolation time in your cocoon, what's next? Prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. We're going to be evangelizing this world. But part of us evangelizing this world is the isolation process. Before we can fly into ministry, we must enjoy and become one with this cocoon we're in right now. Use this time alone in your houses. Use this time alone to draw close to God, to hear from God. You know the old expression you hear some of the folks at church say, it's tight, but it's right. Well, it's tight in a cocoon. As we grow, as, as caterpillars, I'm, I'm going in four different directions to end up at the same point. As we grow as caterpillars, we're in a tight space. We're in this cocoon. We may not like it. It may be tight. It may seem confined. We may not have room to move like we want to, move about here and there and do whatever we want to do. But there are times where God will put his people on lockdown and he will allow the enemy to set the stage. But God is fulfilling his purpose because what God wants us to do is take advantage of this time on lockdown in our cocoon. And what God is doing is growing wings on us. We are going through a metamorphosis. This is the time to get to know yourself, body of Christ. This is your time for true repentance, God's children. This is the time for purging, for laying aside every weight and sin that would so easily beset you. This is the time to seek the Lord and his righteousness to seek the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. So now what does God do? He lays the ax. The ax is laid unto the root of the trees. Verse 10. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth fruit is honed down and cast into the fire. Yet... After our flesh has been cast into the fire, after we have burned up the works of darkness in our life and gotten rid of it, God will indeed baptize us with his Holy Ghost. That fire will continue to burn away the dross, burn away the sin, burn away our old ways, burn away the old man as we continue to come to him in a spirit of humility and repentance, we will be set on fire. The fire will burn our dross away. The fire will burn our crap away. And as we are burned, we will glow as lights and we will be the light of this world, the salt of this earth. And we will be used by God and God, when he comes, will gather the wheat and we will be that wheat. Now, use this time. I say all that to say. Use this time to stay in the fire. As you are in the cocoon, keep the cocoon ablaze with the fire of God. The fire will not consume you, but the fire will consume your flesh in the spirit realm. The fire will consume your sins. The fire will consume your desires for sin. The fire will consume those characteristics that God wants out of you. The fire will consume what God is not pleased with. He knew all that we had to deal with. Some of us deal with emotional scars, psychological scars, spiritual scars. Some of us have to deal with with dark memories and things and hang-ups and, and, and insecurities and all kind of bondages. But the fire will burn all that up if we stay in God's presence 
and let him keep us set on the fires of the Holy Ghost. Ask God to continually fill you and refill you with his Holy Ghost so that you do not allow your flesh to reign in your life. Now, as you face who God shows you, in other words, as you face yourself with honesty, with truth, and you see selfishness, and you ask God to forgive you for selfishness and get it out of you, and you rebuke the spirit of selfishness, you drive the enemy out of your land. As you go in to possess your land, you drive the enemy out, and you do everything you need to do. You strip yourself bare before God and stay your behind in that cocoon. Because in that cocoon, you will learn. In that cocoon, you will grow. Take this time, you guys. I believe it'll be a two-month window. Take the time to get all you can get from God. Fill your cocoon with all the power you can get with God. Because when God is ready for you to come out of the cocoon, like he told Noah to come out of the ark, when it was the fullness of time, he said, come out, be fruitful and multiply. And when God pulls us out of that cocoon and we work our way out and strengthen our wings and soak up the Lord in his presence and in praise and worship and get to know him more intimately because it's in knowing God that empowers you that much more. It's in knowing God that your faith grows to the point where God can use you in the miraculous, in the supernatural. It's in knowing God that you recognize things in the spirit realm that you won't see right now. The more you know God, the bigger you'll grow, the bigger your wings will be, and the more you'll be able to do with God and the more effective you'll be in this dark and sinful world. So, knowing that, this is your time to soak him in. Get that word all in your system. Read it when you're bored. Read it when you don't like it. Read it out loud when it's putting you to sleep. Stand up, walk through your room, and read the word, but get it in you. Play tapes of it being read to you, but read the word. I have a playlist where the word is read from Genesis all the way to Revelations. Play that word. Fill your atmosphere with this word. Fill the atmosphere with praise and worship. Keep your atmosphere clear and clean of all contaminants. Now is a time for consecration in your cocoon. And when God pulls you out of the cocoon, You'll be so fired up. You'll be shocked at the stuff that comes out of your mouth. You'll be shocked at the new levels of confidence and power you'll be operating in. You'll be flying in ways you never flew before. Because now you got your spiritual wings. And you're able to do all exploits. So seek God now. Equip yourself now with the word of God. Pray, pray, pray. Some of you may have to fast. Some of us may have to fast. But pray. Praise God. Love on him. Seek his love. Some of you will do much better once you are convinced of God's love. Once you are convinced of his existence in your life, of his involvement in you, of his investment in you. Seek God's presence. Seek his love. Seek his way that he has for you. Seek the calling he has on you. Ask God for every gift you think you want, whether it's the gift of prophecy, preaching, whether it's the gift of teaching, whether it's the gift of, ex of exhorting, of working of miracles, of tongues, of interpretation of tongues, of, of discernment, 
whether it's the a knowledge, wisdom, whatever your thing is, ask God to give it to you. This is the time for equipping, for growth, for strengthening, for cleansing, and for empowerment. For the anointing, ask God to let you be dripping with the anointing of God. Because when it's time to bust out of here, and I'm not talking about the rapture, when it's time to bust out of your cocoons, you're going to see a major difference in you and in the way God uses you. And the more you do it, and the longer you do it, the more fire will be in you and the more power you'll operate under. I ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to fill those of us who have never been filled with the Holy Spirit, baptize us with the Holy Ghost, and let us have a daily infilling. Let not a day go by without more of your Holy Spirit filling us, Lord. In Jesus' name, fill us with your love, Fill us with your power. Fill us with your anointing. Fill us with discernment. Fill us with revelation. New levels of revelation as we read your word. In Jesus' name, I bless and praise you, Father. And I pray that you dispatch your guardian, warring, ministering angels over each one of your people. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. God bless you guys.